What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are at the Beacon Theater in Manhattan, and today we are here with Nick and Blake of Joyous Wolf. Thank Hello. you for being here. Hey. It's so awesome to have you here. Place and Time is your latest record, which mm. came out in the spring, you said, around April. It was in April, yeah. Yep. Do you just want to talk about how like the making of this record was, the recording, and all that fun stuff? Who wants to go first? I'll let you do it this uh, time. Sure, yeah. Um, the making of that record for us was... Uh, pretty different from any other recording experience that we've kind of undergone uh we wrote all of those songs except like two of the tracks i believe in like under two weeks wow. like wrote them and tracked them in under two weeks and mixed and everything was done around two weeks time so that's pretty unheard of for us we're used to like practicing something and like refining it over a long period of time but this time it happened pretty fast but um it was cool it was a new experience for us and i think we got something new out of, out of it definitely I, w I would say as opposed to like our normal sound it was definitely a, a new a new experience like a new direction too okay one thing i was curious about is does each song did each song on the record call for like a new approach or was there kind of like a usual template that all the songs revolved around everything's completely random mm -hmm. i mean we started off some songs started off mostly completed like he'll write the body of an entire song and and that has no rhyme or reason as opposed to, you know, to any of the other ones you know that we will make just jamming a riff or or even i'll have something and it starts that way so it it really is completely random whatever we just pull out and if it jives and it works and gels with the group then we're good mm -hmm. and that's usually when we know it's if we all are feeling the same thing we usually trust their instinct but yeah it's a good song so okay yeah so a lot there's a lot of improvising involved in the songwriting process extremely so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. at what point are you like this is usually the hardest question for every band to answer mm -hmm. and i normally save it for last but like how do you know when like a song is done at what point are you like satisfied i used to think it was when we recorded it but now it's not even that because we'll record a song and that's what it is in that moment and then from that point on we're a jam elemented group so it changes from show to show and then eventually it takes on a completely different form like the way that we play the songs on the record now as opposed to we did at the beginning of our touring year in march is a completely different uh, approach to the song whether it's the feel of it the speed of it certain things that i do certain things that he plays or greg plays or rob plays it, it just transforms into whatever we want pretty much at the moment the given moment so it never really ends Mm -hmm. So you you execute the songs maybe a little bit differently live than you would like on the album, right? You try yeah. to make it a different experience. I don't know if we try to. I just think we, yeah. we get bored. <laughs> yeah, I think because of the kind of music that it is, or maybe it's the parts that we write, or maybe how we play together, but it always ends up coming out a little bit different, whether it's like a tempo thing, or mm -hmm. maybe it's just like we, we feel it different live. But I mean, people will still recognize the songs if they know them to begin with, but it's cool that we can kind of like bring it bring it a new experience in like a live setting yeah yeah so is, for ourselves and for the audience there you go so it's fair to say that executing your material live is a completely separate energy and a mm -hmm. completely separate experience yeah. than just like playing in a practice yes. space or studio yeah i mean we're we're an extremely like live oriented band like everything kind of starts from that point so when we actually go to record something it's kind of like a it, you know capturing one little moment of that live experience and then kind of seeing where that came from is like seeing it live pretty yeah. much which is kind of cool yeah uh, uh we also just uh we're, we're not, we've never really been about the the idea of okay there's the there's this band and you like this song and you go there and then it sounds a it's verbatim what you heard on the record mm -hmm. and that's it you know it, it, you'll see the show tonight yeah and then you'll see that it's it's quite different. I mean, even when we shoot music videos and stuff, we, we've never really been able to capture the moment if it's not actually happening, you know? Yeah. Well, then it's fair to say when people listen to A Place in Time, it, mm. and I think that speaks highly to the name of the record, yeah. it actually is like a place in time. Yeah. Like it's a yeah. moment that can't be yeah. captured. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And we wanted, we wanted that to be as unique as possible for somebody experiencing it, especially live for the first time. It means a lot to us because mm -hmm. that's kind of how we felt with the bands that we grew up with and we liked so yeah yeah 
And now one question I have specifically for you is with guitar playing and soloing, do you, is there like a theoretical element that you have uh, behind uh, your guitar playing? Like you hear background music and you're like, I have to work off of this scale or in this mode, or is there like, is it all just more improvised? Like you said, I, I, for me personally, it feels a lot like half and half. Like a lot of the time, if I feel like I need to improvise, I'll just kind of like let my mind wander and whatever I feel, I'll just let come out. But Honestly, what what I feel is a big part of that um, is what's happening behind me. Like whatever Greg and Rob are playing or whether there's space for me to do something or if I feel something in the moment or if I want to prepare for something, I'll write it. So it kind of just depends off of what the music calls for a lot of the time. And I, I try to play to the music. I try not to overplay you know even though that happens <laughs> yeah. but you know the the main goal is that like the impact of the music comes first and that i am there to like kind of just express myself on that yeah it's not like your dream theater where you could write a solo that's like 27 minutes <laughs> long and, yeah like, i mean for for that kind of music it, it, it's awesome but just for for what i want to do and for what we do it's like i really want everything to kind of have a purpose whether you can tell it or not I, i'm trying to express something with a purpose mm -hmm. and now one question i have specifically for you is when it comes to like lyrics in your voice do you need yeah. to hear music to come up with lyrics or do you sometimes have like a subject matter that you want to sing about and that could help determine it's, the outcome it's of everything music? it's every little possible way you know i mean sometimes we have songs that are about dreams that i've had that is right down they're weird and i'm like that would be an interesting song or or things sometimes it'll be it'll be a word that one of them says randomly and I'm like that's just a, that's a funny word and I like that word let's and it it, it can really be about anything and I've, I've written so far the songs that we've written I think I don't really have any template you know it just whatever whenever it could be me by myself bringing something to them and I have something and I already have a melody and know what I want the words to be or it can or most of the time though I will say it's when they're playing something for the first time and I just listen to what kind of what he's saying whatever's happening you know whatever he's doing Greg's doing Rob's doing and usually I just grab on to one of them if not all of them and that's where the melody I come from I think of comes from is from the rest of them so really it all just depends on what they're doing right? are, are lyrics open to interpretation or do you try to maybe get the audience or the listener to see things from like your point of view i think it's always open to interpretation i, I feel like it, just because i wrote it about something that might be very specific to what i'm thinking about i try to leave it as open as i can to people to do whatever they want sometimes a song is going to be about this and you can tell it's about that you know but most of the time i like to leave it loose and let people do whatever they want with it because i feel like that's why that's like why i like a lot of songs you know mm -hmm. Like, I, for the longest time, I didn't know what losing my religion was about, you know, but it made me feel a certain way, you know. And then when I read what it was actually about, I never thought it would... The R.E.M. song? Yeah. I never thought it would be that. You yeah. know, it's like, that's kind of the thing, though. It didn't make me, didn't make me dislike the song or like it more or anything. I, I, I still get the feeling when I listen to it. So I think mostly I'm just trying to provoke that, just... T you take it and you do and you make it about what you want it to be about you know did you discover that song through rem or did you discover discover like i did through lacuna coil uh rem most definitely okay yeah mom mom and dad mom and dad loved loved them some yeah, some right. uh, early yeah. 80s uh alternative music <laughs> yeah. definitely 24 uh 26 <laughs> <laughs> i'm 25 so. oh, oh wow yeah. there you go there you go <laughs> I guess you're just more cultured. Uh, I don't know. No, no, it's not that. Not, not even remotely. So it's just, just you know, you 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 are what you come up with. You know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the final question I wanted to ask you is, um, uh, kind of like a, a bit of a cliche question, but right mm -hmm. now you're on tour with Deep Purple, mm -hmm. which you know, one yeah. of the most influential rock bands yeah. in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, again, kind of cliche, but like, how does it feel playing with a band? Because when I hear when I heard your music, I can instantly tell like that you guys take some inspiration from them even when i was listening you covered a mississippi queen mm -hmm. i believe and like i even found some like deep purple riffage in that and the vocal range in it like i'd imagine that this is kind of like a surreal experience right oh every every night <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it blows our mind like the guys from the band will like stop by our dressing room and like talk to us all the time and even watch some of our songs live and it's really weird trying to process that. You have to almost like pretend like it's not happening because it doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense that it's happening to mm -hmm. you. But it's it couldn't be a bigger honor 
actually. And they've been yeah. the mo most supportive group of guys on this tour for us, letting us do our thing before them. So, yeah, yeah what a surreal experience for sure. Yeah. Every single one of them are fantastic people, you yeah. know. It's great that like a long running rock and roll veteran is also very supportive over like when you see like newer rock bands like you guys or the Glorious they, Sons. They've or, they've uh, been very very supportive to the point where I'm surprised. Yeah, you know. they don't have to be as nice as they have ever, have been. <laughs> you know, like they go out of their way. I remember we were sitting on like uh, I mean we're on like the seventh floor of like a uh, you know, obviously a seven floor building right now, yeah. but we're on the seventh floor. And a couple of shows ago we were on like the fourth floor of a four story uh, building and they walked all the way up just to talk to us. And I was like, they have to do that. It's, it's, yeah. it's a little things like that where you're like, wow. Yeah. There was a scheduling mishap that happened at a show recently uh, where we ended up get pretty much playing to an empty room because the way that they scheduled things was, was improper and it was the, the venue the promoters fault and it was a big mess. And so, but you know, it was not, we never thought for a moment, well, this is Deep Purple's fault. We would never think that, anyways, you yeah. know. But they, but on multiple occasions, three, at least three of them that we ran into, that would, or two of them actually walked up, you know, and 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 apologized, which was saying sorry to us about that. And we're like looking at them, like, you don't. What are you? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was exactly. like, you, know, you didn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, uh, and it just it just shows how great, great and down to earth and completely, completely. Uh, wonderful people they are you know just to come and say that to us and mm -hmm. you know they, they just they genuinely felt bad that we didn't have an audience to play to that night which was quite well, nice we're in new york city we bring it you'll have a full house tonight oh, oh yeah we'll be fun to it it's gonna be a great night better be there's enough people in this damn city <laughs> yeah right yeah. right did you hit any traffic yeah, on the way here oh <laughs> uh, we were all sleeping we didn't yeah, yeah we slept God. through it yeah yeah you go <laughs> so before we go i want to thank you all so much for your time today it's going to be a great show tonight is there just anything else you would like to promote in terms of tours or maybe uh, new music um we're going to work on another record mm -hmm. after this tour is over to start start really getting on that yeah we've been on tour this year probably for a total of eight months is that right seven months seven seven months we've by the time it's all said and done it'll yeah. be like seven months yeah so we're hopefully done hopefully we're just yeah. going to like go right and it's looking that way yeah it's looking it's i mean i think i think we're we're all pretty done for this year i think yeah. we're gonna we're gonna close in at like 130 something shows when we're all completely done and i think that's that's enough i think that's yeah. enough i think that's uh, we did our did our work for the year you know mm -hmm. so yeah. but yeah. 2020 is looking like it's going to be just as it's busy. going to be yeah. more busy oh it's going to be so much yeah our, our agent yeah. actually called me the other day and he was joking he's like you thought this year is this so wait till the next one <laughs> and i was like why are you making me scared because like, you know. that's the agent yeah. that's what they're supposed to do yeah exactly you know your agent's yeah. doing a good job when they scare you oh exactly totally. no he's, oh, yeah. he's he's the best in the world he really yeah. is he's yeah. yeah we're lucky man everybody that we got on our team and everyone on our side and Joyous Wolfland is mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing people. Yeah, very blessed. Yep. Mm -hmm. there you go. Well, thank you guys so much. Everybody, we are here with Joyous Wolf. Be sure to pick up a place in time if you haven't already. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.